These results are documented in a peer-reviewed journal in the Open Civil Engineering Journal, Volume 2. 14 points of agreement, he calls it, with official government reports on the World Trade Center destruction, because it turns out that there is much in common between the NIST report, the FEMA report, and the work that uh, we are doing. And of course, there's much disagreement as well. But uh, Dr. Jones is an optimist. So we're going to look for the points of agreement. He's also documented this in applying the scientific method, uh, which is on our website, ae911truth.org, also on journalof911studies.com. With Dr. Jones and his small team of scientists, through EDS, XRF, and WDS, identifies the components of these spheres and chips, predominantly iron, along with aluminum, oxygen, silicon, 1,3-diphenylpropane, the results coupled with the visual evidence, he says, at the scene, such as the flowing hot liquid metal, providing compelling evidence that thermite reaction compounds were deliberately placed in both World Trade Center towers and Building 7. Verify the results, please. This must be repeatable. There's lots of dust out there. We encourage everyone who has any samples of this dust to email us at ae911truth.org so that we can get repeatable samplings done. We need a lot of this. Now all of this is direct evidence of explosive destruction in Building 7. We'll come jump back to only Building 7 now. Now none of these characteristics can be explained by fire, let alone all of them. Why? Well, Buildings are protected from fire. High-rise steel frame buildings in particular have two and three hour fire protection designed to allow the occupants to escape a fire. But even after, in fires that are much longer than two hours, larger, these buildings have not collapsed. Why? Let's take a look. Here's New York, 1970, burned six hours over five floors. Los Angeles, three and a half hours over five floors. Philadelphia, 18 hours over eight floors. Caracas, Venezuela, burned 17 hours over 26 floors. Not one of these fi fires brought these high-rises down. In fact, no steel frame high-rise building has ever been brought down by any fire. Yet relatively small and randomly placed fires and a whole lot of smoke is to have brought this skyscraper, Building 7, down in six and a half seconds after burning in just that afternoon. How about that FEMA report and these investigations? Well, we had four investigations, starting in 2001 with the ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers. We're told these are volunteers, but these are not your average PTA volunteers. These guys earn $10 million annually, average, between them, uh, working for the Defense Department in their exp with their expertise mainly on blast resistance of buildings. Then we have the FEMA report in 2002 which finally got some funding, $600,000. Compare that to the $40 million effort to find out the source of those stains on Monica Lewinsky's dress. This is easily the third worst structural failure in modern history. It deserves a far greater response and resources. In 2002, we had the Silverstein Weidlinger Report, responsible for reversing the theory of FEMA, which came up basically with the pancake theory or the zipper theory, where one truss pulled away from the columns and then caused the others to pull away, and that chain reaction went around and then the, pan the, the floors pancaked all the way down. We'll talk about that. Silverstein Weidlinger report was responsible for changing that theory because if that were true, it would have been the bolts that broke, and therefore Larry Silverstein, the overall owner of this complex, would not have been paid his $5.6 billion that he's been paid on the insurance settlement. Why? Because that would have been the building's fault instead of the terrorist's fault. So we had to have another theory. And the new theory states that the trusses sagged, pulled in the columns, they blamed the persistence of that connection, and then the columns buckled, and then the whole thing came down. Either way, it's something that we're going to be looking at very, very critically here in a moment. Then we have the NIST investigation, which took over uh, all of these investigations in 2005 and came up with a three-year, $20 million effort. We'll take a close look 
at NIST's work. These experts who worked on these buildings all worked from the FEMA report, or most of them, into the Weidlinger report and into the NIST report. These are not independent investigation by any means whatsoever. Let's listen to what FEMA did conclude, because it is interesting. Evidence of a severe high temperature corrosion attack on the steel, including rapid oxidation, sulfidation, and subsequent intergranular melting. Very interesting. Remember, office fires don't melt steel. What melted this steel? Sulfur formed during this hot corrosion attack on the steel. Here is the intergranular melting documented for all of us. Thank you. Capable of turning a solid steel girder into Swiss cheese, like this former column, wide flange column, from the structural steel in Building 7. Now they document this very carefully in their Appendix C. Listen to this. Gaping holes, some larger than a silver dollar, let light shine through. A one-inch column being reduced to half-inch thickness. Its edges curled like a paper scroll, having been thinned to almost razor sharpness. This was the flange curled up on itself. This is the web of that wide flange column. NIST swept this entire Appendix C under the rug, and we do not have it in the official report today. Listen to this, though. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 had a small debris field as the facade was pulled downward, suggesting internal failure and implosion. The specifics of the fires in World Trade Center 7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown at this time. What? Unknown? The best hypothesis, fire plus random damage, and then complete collapse, has only a low probability of occurrence. Wait a minute. You spent $600,000 of our taxpayer money and, and over a year investigating this and it has a your best hypothesis isn't even right? What do you do when your hypothesis is not corroborated by the facts? You go back and you construct a new hypothesis. In FEMA's case, punt. And that's what they did. They say further research, investigation, and analysis are, are needed to resolve this issue. But unfortunately, for those hoping to resolve the issue, much of that evidence had already been destroyed, about 99% of it, in fact, by FEMA before the report came out in May of 2002. Let's listen to what real investigation should have been performed. Normally, uh, when you have a structural failure, uh, you carefully go through the debris field, uh, looking at each item, photographing every beam as it collapsed and every uh, a column where it is in the ground, and you pick them up very carefully and you uh, look at each element. We were unable to do that in the case of Tower 7. Why? Because all the steel was removed before the report came out. In fact, 800 truckloads a day. Easily the, thir the three worst structural failures in modern history. 250 pieces were saved. Crucial evidence that could answer the questions is on the slow boat to China, exclaims Bill Manning, editor-in-chief of the 125-year-old Fire Engineering magazine that brings together fire protection engineers to communicate with each other, showing an astounding ignorance of the government officials to the value of a thorough scientific investigation. The destruction and removal of evidence must stop immediately. Commission a fully resourced blue ribbon panel to conduct a clean and thorough investigation is what they were calling for. If the evidence contradicts your fire hypothesis, destroy it. That's where our tax dollars are going. How about the 9-11 Commission, which was tasked with giving us the fullest explanation? No, not one sentence in the 571 pages of the 9-11 Commission report even mentions the destruction of World Trade Center 7. Is this one of the reasons, perhaps, that Senator Max Cleland resigns from the Commission, citing it's a national scandal. The investigation is compromised. 